Often, the first step towards treating a patient with congenital hyperinsulism is to give glucagon or dextrose as quickly as possible. This is because, if left untreated, prolonged exposure to very low blood glucose levels puts patients at risk of suffering brain injury. Once blood glucose levels have been stabilised with glucagon and dextrose, it is important to use drugs that can prevent insulin release in the long term. If available, diazoxide will usually be the first drug of choice to treat persistent CHI. However, if it is unavailable or fails to produce a desirable effect, octreotide or lamreotide will be given. Octreotide and lamreotide are synthetic versions of a hormone called somatostatin, which occurs naturally in the body. Whilst both of these drugs prevent insulin release from pancreatic beta cells, they do have some differences. Octreotide is a short-acting analogue, so has to be given by subcutaneous injection, i.e. into a fatty layer of tissue, up to four times a day or continuously via a pump. In contrast, lamreotide is long-acting and only has to be injected once a month. Understandably, the latter approach is more appealing. However, lamreotide is still relatively new and there is no guarantee that it will be effective in all CHI patients. Insulin release begins with glucose entering pancreatic beta cells and being processed by enzymes to cause an increase in ATP, which is the source of energy that all cells need to function. Increasing ATP levels cause the ATP-sensitive potassium channels, or KATP channels, to close. This closure switches the beta cells to a more excited state which in turn opens calcium channels on the beta cell surface, allowing calcium to travel into the beta cell. Rising calcium levels within the beta cell cause insulin-containing granules to move to the surface of the cell. This is essential to enable insulin to be released into the blood. In order to prevent insulin release when blood glucose levels are low, the KATP channels, along with other potassium channels, open, whilst calcium channels close. The effect of this is that calcium cannot enter the beta cell, which in turn prevents insulin release. Octreotide blocks insulin release by preventing many of these steps. For example, it causes the KATP channels and other potassium channels to open. This means that instead of the beta cell being excited, it remains in a resting, largely inactive state. Octreotide can also prevent the opening of calcium channels. By preventing the entry of calcium into the beta cell, octreotide ensures that insulin remains within the cell instead of being released into the blood. The majority of the time, octreotide is very well tolerated by patients but occasionally it can produce unwanted side effects, such as nausea, vomiting, and a buildup of bile in the gallbladder. Due to the latter effect, every six months, experienced medical staff will perform an ultrasound examination, a painless procedure used to monitor any changes in the gallbladder. Thank you for listening. If you would like any further information or support, please contact your local CHI service.